All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 1 to the power of x is equal to 2. So before we even start solving this, if let's say x is equal to 1, then I have 1 to the power of 1, which is equal to 1. And if x is equal to 2, then I have 1 to the power of 2, which is also equal to 1. And you can go even x1 to, to the power of 10 is still equal to 1. So you may be thinking, what possible value of x can make 1 to the power of x equal to 2? So let's try solving this. What I'm first going to do is start by taking ln of both sides. So I get ln of 1 to the power of x is equal to ln of 2. And ln is the same thing as a natural log. And the reason I took that ln on both sides is because it comes with a property that states that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 2. And you may be thinking, we could just divide both sides by ln1, and x would equal ln2 over ln1. However, the only problem with this is that ln1 is equal to 0. And remember, you can't, anything divided by 0 is undefined, so this would be undefined. So we know that this equation has no real solution, but it could still have imaginary solutions. So to actually solve this, I'm going to use something known as Euler's formula. And basically what this formula is, is if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know to many of you watching this video, this may just sound like a bunch of gibberish, but just hang on. So let's say that theta is equal to zero, right? Say that theta equals zero. So now I get e to the power of i times zero is equal to cosine of zero plus i times sine of zero. Cosine of zero is one and sine of zero is zero. So I get this all is equal to one. Now, what if we say theta is equal to two k pi and k is just a substitution for all real numbers. So, so now I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 1. Because all we did was we just substituted theta in for 2k pi into this same thing. So now, because this is equal to 1, we can sub remember our first equation, which we started with 1 to the power of x equals 2, we can substitute in this for 1, meaning I get e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So just think of this as 1. So I basically 1 to the power of x equals 2. And now with this, I'm going to take the ln or natural log on both sides. So I have ln e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So I'm going to now bring this x down using property of natural logarithms. So I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 2. 
is sorry is equal to ln of two because I, if you take one, ln on one side you have to do the other side and now I can also move i times 2k pi to the front. So I have i times 2k pi times x times ln e is equal to ln 2. ln e is simply equal to 1. So I get x is equal to ln 2 over i times 2k pi. And now I'm going to multiply this by i over i. So I get x is equal to negative i times ln2 over 2k pi, because i squared is negative 1. So this is my solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 9 to the power of 10 plus 9 to the power of 10 plus 9 to the power of 10. And for this problem, I actually have four option choices. So for A, I have 27 to the power of 30. For B, I have 9 to the power of 30. For C, I have 27 to the power of 10. And for D, I have 3 to the power of 21. So to first start out, let's go through all these option choices and see if they're right or not. So we first have a 27 to the power of 30. And how this likely was resulted in was from adding all the bases and adding all the exponents. So we have 9 plus 9 plus 9 to the power of 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is equal to 27 to the power of 30. And this is actually wrong because this is not the proper way to add exponents. So now going from here, this was likely gotten 9 to the power of 30 by keeping the base the same and then adding the exponents. And this again is wrong because this is not the right way to add exponents. Now we have 27 to the power of 10 and this was gone from adding the bases, but keeping the exponent the same. And this again is wrong as well. That's not how you add exponents. Now three to the power of 21, which is by process of elimination, the right answer, we're going to see how they got this. So we first start with nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10. And I'm going to factor out nine to the power of 10. So I get nine to the power of 10 times one plus one plus one, which is equal to nine to the power of 10 times three. And now this is equal to three squared to the power of 10 times three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 10 is going to equal 3 to the power of 20. And I have this times 3 to the power of 1. So I simply just add the exponents. This is equal to 3 to the power of 21. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends or family members.